Halloween isn't quite over yet. I think there's time for one more ghost story. And every good ghost story begins with a homicide. In this case, a digital homicide. Digital Homicide was a garbage video game developer circa 2015 or so run by brothers James and Robert Romine. Their games barely worked, often had no objectives or completion state, broken weapons, broken enemy AI, blatantly recycled and at times clip art assets, and they were horrifically prolific, at times spamming over 20 games to Steam in a matter of months. They pulled every dirty trick in the book, swapping out the enemy models or camera angle to sell it as a new game, posting games under a host of fake studio named shell companies, giving their games away for pennies en masse to cash in on trading card sales. They even sold their games on Itch.io, but buying them wouldn't actually get you the game. It got you the promise of a Steam key if the game got onto Steam. They weren't kicked off the storefront though, not until this proverbial Icarus flew too close to the sun. Digital Homicide decided to blame their failing business on the reporting of games industry pundit James Stephanie Sterling and on a phantom group of Steam users who were downvoting and negatively reviewing their games, presumably because they had working eyeballs. So Digital Homicide sued Sterling for $12 million in damages, tried to sue 100 anonymous Steam users for another $18 million, and tried to sue Valve for breach of contract for not doxing the other people in their lawsuits. Valve finally gave them the boot, and little is known what's become of them since. I think they tried getting back on Steam a few years back, and they may have had a blog bitching about all the people who scorned them, but they've mostly gone radio silent in the years since. Their games lost to time. Unless you already owned them. I think it's high time I dusted off one of these lost and forgotten relics. Their big attempt at a horror title, Paranormal Psychosis. Okay, I have a few questions about this title screen. For one, why are there two weird boxes marked Minor Spoiler and Major Spoiler in the corners? Did they try actually telling a story in one of these for once? And for two, someone tracked down where they got this cover model picture. The game begins with you staring directly at two transparent horses that you can walk right through. Why the ghost horses? You don't phase through the carriage. Was this to disguise a clipping issue, or...? You spawn on a small island in the middle of a thunderstorm. A pop-up of text walls informs you that you've inherited some kind of mansion on this island, but the place is haunted, and if you go through all seven friggin' walls of text, it kinda gives you some instructions. Apparently you need to find some family heirlooms in the cemetery, there's a shipwreck with a lost gold treasure, there are three witches that you need to kill with voodoo, and there's a haunted groundskeeper that you need to fight last at the actual mansion. Alright then, graveyard first, I have my trusty pistol. ADVENTURE AWAITS! HUZZAH! Oh crap, the place is crawling with bugs and mice that jump onto your screen, how do I avoid those? Oh crap, I'm out of bullets and being run down by zombies. Apparently you only get one magazine and I don't think there are any refills. Ah, shit. Okay, let's not do the cemetery yet. Let's try the beach. They talked about a shipwreck, so I'm sure there's plenty of, oh, a wolf monster. And it's a shit. What in the name of hell? I buy that he shrugged off my bullets. It is a digital homicide game, but the damn thing killed me in one hit. What gives? Okay, left and right paths are a no-go. Let's try the middle path. Surely there's got to be at least one. Oh, you son of a bitch! The wolf thing got me again. Well, if I wait long enough to get the wolf thingy to wander off, I can take the left path to find a voodoo doll that I'm guessing is one of the heirlooms, but grabbing it spawns a giant green monster tentacle thing that, of course, my handgun doesn't even mildly irritate. I'm starting to think that the Romines were the inspiration for Gilson B. Pontes. Step one for accomplishing jack squat in this game is finding out that if you take the center path until you see a text prompt at the top of the screen, you can turn left and get a chainsaw. In fact, since they couldn't program the prompt correctly, you can get an infinite number of respawning chainsaws, but you can't dual wield or juggle them, so it really doesn't matter. Now you can fight off the zombies in the graveyard to look for the family heirlooms, but the chainsaw and the general combat still blow ass. Much like the Romine's other horror game, Double Share, you take damage from just standing near enemies regardless of whether or not they actually attack you. I caught it on tape. A zombie staring 90 degrees clear in the wrong direction and still hitting me. 
So the gun runs out fast and the chainsaw has a shorter range than the enemies do, it is pretty much impossible to take out any zombies without taking a good chunk of damage. And sometimes a zombie hits me and it drains all my health at once for instant death for no reason that I am able to discern. What the hell is up with that? That's the eternal problem with digital homicide games. You don't know if baffling shit like this is a programming error or a mechanic on purpose that you're just missing. And no doubt you've already noticed that the game environment is a total shithole. It's too damn dark to see anything that you're doing, and there is no flashlight in the game. Your only hope for seeing Jack is the regular thunderstrikes that illuminate the area for about a second, and the inexplicably glowing items perpetually shining off in the distance. Past that, you're just fumbling around in the really shitty fog effects that parse at horizontal lines so that the whole game looks like a TV on a test pattern. The stock pre-bought assets are so haphazardly assembled, if they were even modified at all, that I found a lot of walls and trees floating a few solid feet off of the ground. A lot of the rocks you can phase right through, and the physics are so borked that you can just walk straight up the sides of the mountain with little to no resistance. And if you happen to trip into any terrain where the floor is made of rocks, the game's physics and movement glitch up to where you can't move or jump at all! So loads of innocuous spaces are friggin' trap holes that force you to restart the game and flush your inventory. The one saving grace to the game is that when you die you get to keep any items that you picked up and it reloads your handgun, but you don't get to keep any of your weapons. Trouble is, the game doesn't actually save any progress, so if you shut off the game or get forced to restart by the physics dicking you over, your inventory gets completely wiped. And if you thought you could escape getting stuck by an enemy wandering over and killing you, yeah, dream on. Enemies only actually spawn in two friggin' spots of the entire map. The cemetery and some small area with three zombies somewhere in the mountains. The entire rest of the map is completely empty. Just you wandering barren terrain hoping you don't get jumped and die instantly. Yeah, that wolf monster that I keep running into, that's the werewolf. He kills you in one hit, he runs much faster than you, and there is no way to shake him. And none of your weapons damage him. If you read the instructions really closely, you can stun him with a silver spear weapon. None of your other attacks even phase him. So the Romines, in complete ignorance of every convention of game design ever created, gave the game a completely randomized and unpredictable instant death frustration mechanic. If the werewolf shows up and you don't have the silver spear, and spoilers, you won't, you just drop dead instantly and there is not a damn thing that you can do about it. So I found the voodoo doll near the entrance and one of the main paths leads to a stack of gold, except the gold does not appear in your inventory. Is it a bug, or does the gold not actually do anything? I get the feeling that the answer to both is yes. Wandering around the cemetery, I eventually find the second heirloom, another voodoo doll, and I just kind of trip over this... What is that? Some kind of iron pole thing? You carry it like a weapon, but the fire button doesn't actually do anything, and my arms have transformed into little chicken legs. Now, seriously, what the hell kind of anatomy does my player character have for this first-person view to be a thing? Not that it matters, because I immediately die and lose in any way. The glowing mushrooms heal you, but they don't come back when you die, but the enemies don't seem to respawn or get health back either, so there is some hope of actually making progress. So I got the two voodoo dolls, and I spent ages walking laps around the entire barren friggin' island. I can't find any more items, but my inventory is still mostly empty. Did they intentionally give the inventory more slots than can ever be filled, or am I just terrible at this? Maybe I should try go fighting the witches. I'm stuck in a pit! I can't get out, and none of the enemies are coming to kill my ass to respawn me. Now I have to restart, lose my inventory, and start from scratch AGAIN! Lucky for me, someone posted a walkthrough on the game's forums. I did indeed have all the three items that they bothered to add to the game, and I was ready to fight the bosses. Bosses being in the loosest air quotes possible. Of course, if you click the spoiler buttons on the main menu, it would have spoon-fed you this information anyway. You get both voodoo dolls and you go fight the witches, who give you an item that you need for the final boss. And that weird-ass iron pole that I found in the graveyard? Yeah, that's the silver spear! It's placed right next to the second voodoo doll, only you might miss it, because sometimes it appears like a normal item, and sometimes it's buried in the ground. 
That's just great. The instant death jackal can only be fought with a potentially invisible weapon. In fact, the reason that I stumbled across it on accident in the first place is because it was buried all the way into the ground! This shit was invisible! Trouble is, the combat with the zombies is so suicidal, good friggin' luck getting the spear and then escaping the graveyard alive to ever get any chance to use it. And I scoured this damn graveyard. I am 90% sure that if you get the spear and then you die, it doesn't come back. That shit is gone forever and you're werewolf feed, punk! And don't forget, the green tentacle monster guarding the beach voodoo doll is pretty much guaranteed to kill you no matter what you do. So if you went for the graveyard voodoo doll first, kinda boned. At least I get why the game doesn't save now. This thing was designed to be finished in about 15 minutes, most of which is slow ass tedious walking to your destination and bungling around the graveyard looking for items. I would guess that a solid 85% of the map is completely superfluous, empty, and unused. So there's a side island where you can go and three dudes sit around a campfire and blast you with lightning. It took me longer than I'd care to admit to figure out that these are the witches, because of course there aren't any basic enemies past the zombies. And when the game said, kill the witches with voodoo, it meant that two of the witches will just drop dead instantly if you have the voodoo dolls, because of course they didn't design actual combat or boss fights. The third one just sits still hucking bats at you. And there is one magazine that you can pick up to refill your handgun ammo. It's near the witches and it respawns infinitely so that you can just mow down the boss for even less effort. The walkthrough was under the impression that every time you die you get extra handgun bullets because the game doesn't check your ammo, but near as I can tell, that's false. There's no ammo count because of course there isn't, but I hucked myself off the level several times to test it out. Okay, why did they bother putting a shark in the water if you die instantly when touching the water anyway? Oh! It's because you don't die instantly in the water and they couldn't program drowning. Because of course they didn't! And apparently they didn't program invisible walls around the map either! Of course they didn't! It wouldn't be a digital homicide game if you couldn't easily fall out of the game world! Once you kill the witch, you get her head as a throwable weapon, and you're supposed to use the head to kill the giant zombie groundskeeper that's protecting the mansion. And given that the head appears in between multiple empty inventory slots, I'm guessing the spear and the gold are supposed to appear there, but they don't because... Of course they don't! And check this out, I have developed reality warping superpowers! I fire six bullets at this zombie at the top of the hill, they don't register, and my bullets leave bullet holes on the empty air. But if I walk a little closer, the game suddenly remembers, oh yeah, I've been shot, and the zombie suddenly dies out of nowhere. How do you even program shit like that on accident? You throw the head vaguely in the groundskeeper's direction, and you win. No cutscene, no actually entering the mansion that they built up, no encounter with the evil lady ghost running the mansion who inexplicably showed up on two trading cards in my inventory but was never actually added to the game. You don't even get to see the final boss die, you get one line of text, now piss off! And the cherry on top? They either forgot or just couldn't figure out how to have the mouse cursor reappear when you win, so there is no actual way to interact with the final screen. Whoops! And because I'm a masochist, I played through the game again because I had to test a little theory of mine. If the witch's head is treated as a weapon, and you lose all your weapons when you die, yep, if you die after killing the witch, you lose the head and can't finish the game even though the head is still listed as an inventory item. But you can go back to where you fought the witches and get the head back. I honestly did not think they'd have that level of foresight. So now that I've got the head back, I can go test whether- MOTHER OF SHIT BOMB MUNCHING BASTARDS! THE DAMN WEREWOLF! Now I have to drag my ass over and get the head. AGAIN?! Hey, check it out. Jumping with the head equipped has it vanish out of your hand. Whoop! 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 Hey, rain slick on tree leaves is supposed to look exactly like thick-ass Christmas lights, right? And yes, you can finish the game perfectly fine without collecting the gold. It doesn't do squat. Because of course it doesn't. Paranormal Psychosis is... barely a game! 
combat that's near impossible to survive, a map that's largely empty, vague objectives that leave you wandering around an empty wasteland, you can barely see what you're doing, the mother of all middle fingers having you just drop dead without warning, and a barrage of blatantly stock assets with floating obstacles so that you can tell the map was either thrown together haphazardly or bought and used without modification in the first place. Games this shitty may not turn heads on Steam anymore, but there's still something magical about revisiting these halcyon days of broken garbage masquerading as entertainment, and hacks who thought that throwing some pre-made assets together made them professional game developers who couldn't fathom why they weren't making literal millions off of their trash. This isn't even the end of the lost video games that I've got in my Steam library. I've got five BMC games that you can't buy anymore, and two that you still can. But one scary story at a time, shall we?